everyone. We are excited. I will start that again. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> we are excited to bring you Flip Tech 2021. We are in uh, session block B, and we are here with Vishak and Nevra to talk about interactive collaborative digital desks. Uh, any questions that you might have, any comments, feel free to plop them into the chat, and we'll keep an eye on those and make sure we get those answered in a timely fashion. Um, and so we might as well just jump right in. So I'm going to turn it over to your two hosts, and I will keep an eye on the waiting room for you. Excellent. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, thanks, Ken. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, it's really nice that you're spending your time with us. Uh, I don't know if you guys are on holiday. We broke up. We've been on holiday for like a week now, haven't we, Bashak? A yeah. week and two days and counting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm in Istanbul. I'm in Istanbul in Turkey, <clears throat> and Bashak's in Bodrum, which is a lovely coastal town in the south of Turkey. So she's there for the whole summer, lucky Bashak. I'm, <laughs> I'm in the middle of a real holiday, uh, and I'm really excited, by the way, if you make mistakes, just <laughs> ignore us. Uh, really excited to be participating in this event. Uh, so shall we start maybe? Yeah. Not, where are you sharing guys? our screen? I'm really interested to see where you guys are from. Do you want to drop it in the chat box or you can turn on your microphone and say where you're from? Let's get back to the beginning. Yeah. You see in the end of the presentation before the beginning. <laughs> okay, so Today we want to uh, talk to you and share with you and hopefully get uh, do some interactive uh, things with you as well uh, in our session. We want to talk to you about digital desks which we use for interaction and collaboration in our online lessons this year. Um, so, a little bit about me. Um, I have been teaching for 25 years. Yes, I started at the age of 10, just young and beautiful as always. And EdTech is something that I'm really passionate about, passionate about the same as Bashak. I grew up in the UK, which you have probably guessed from my accent. I never wanted to be a teacher when I was little. I wanted to be a fashion designer, but then I changed my mind later on. And I'm very happy that I did because I absolutely love teaching. And, uh, I love cooking and I'm pretty good at it as the kilos and the weight shows. Uh, and I am Bashak. I have been teaching for 21 years now. Uh, yeah, I know it's too much. I need to consider retiring soon maybe, uh, but I'm glad we had filters with Zoom this year. This was the best part of this year, I guess. I love teaching, learning, sharing and reading. And currently I'm teaching at a private school with Nevra. We are teaching in the same level for grade three and four students. Uh, I love long, young learners. I have also taught other levels too before, including adults, but this is my favorite level, I guess. And as many of you or as all of you, we started teaching online for the first time in our lives with the pandemic. Uh, it was very exciting. <laughs> and frightening at the beginning, but we got used to it, I assume. And as Nevra, I'm eager to learn about EdTech tools. And I think this is why we are here in the middle of our summer holidays, all of us, or most of us. And that's all from me, I guess now, if you have any questions. <clears throat> so um, today, what do we have on our menu? Uh, we've got our session will be in two parts. We're gonna have a little introduction session where we talk about digital desks, what they are, how we use them. And in part two, we're gonna have a little bit of interaction and we'll try digital desks together and share our ideas. And we want you to share your ideas as well. And so part one, the introduction. Okay. Asha. So assuming that you might have seen the pre-work before in the flipped part session, I'm going to try cutting this part as short as I can so that we can have more time for the interactive part. Uh, now, during this past academic year, we were mostly online as I told a few minutes ago. And one of the things we want to improve 
uh, from our side and the students' sides was writing their writing skills. In the classroom, it's easy. When we have our students, you can touch them, you can see what they're doing, uh, you can see their notebooks when they're writing. Uh, but in the online, it has many disadvantages for all of us, for the teachers, for the students, for all of us, it was really difficult. At least this is what we believed. Uh, and we believe we weren't the only ones uh, who had difficulties having their students write and check and give feedback to them. Uh, so in our pre-work, we also sent you a survey Google form, uh, which where we saw your uh, answers to. And we know we are not alone, actually. Now, I want to uh, uh, state some disadvantages for, from the students' side. So what were they for us, the disadvantages they, that we had and they experienced? They had difficulties concentrating as they were alone, mostly alone in their homes, rooms. They couldn't focus on what they were writing. And then they felt lonely, isolated in front of their screens, and they weren't motivated in the online uh, as much as when they were in our classes face to face. And they, they were discouraged because they couldn't get instant feedback from their teacher when they needed it. And uh, it was also difficult to take, like, uh, for the teacher, for, for us too, uh, because for, for them, I'm getting so excited. I cannot put my sentences together, I guess, now. Uh, so it was like we wanted them to write something and then to show their screens, tilt their screen so that we could see. But it was only uh, the parts that where we saw their pens, pencils moving, that they had their notebooks. But this was all the writing things we could see. Uh, so we asked them to take a photo of their work and then send it to us. And it was very difficult for those young learners because they couldn't take proper photos. They were blurry, we couldn't see it. And then it was also difficult for them to attach it to an email and send it to a teacher. So it was difficult for students too. And for teachers, we couldn't see what they were writing uh, while they were writing. We couldn't see the final product most of the time because they most of them wouldn't send or couldn't send the emails to us. And we couldn't provide the help that they needed, actually. And when and if you get a product as a teacher from a student, it was only and only through wet web, which made it more difficult to give feedback compared to pen and pencil, because we couldn't write on their notebooks, take notes, and send it back. It was difficult to send it back to. So, uh, the whole process had no interaction, no collaboration for students, for teachers, for peers in their class. So they couldn't uh, use the advantage of learning from their peers as well. Basically, these are the difficulties we faced, but uh, we know that we can all make this list longer if you have, if you had uh, experience other difficulties, it would be really nice to hear from you too on, about writing skills. Uh, you could just turn your microphones on or write it from the chat if you want. And this is where we realized we needed a solution. Knowing what we had to address uh, to increase interaction and collaboration, we came uh, with an idea uh, of digital desks. And so here we are. And Nira will be telling us and showing us the examples. Have you got any questions for me so far? Okay, fine. We're clear in the chat. Okay, <laughs> everything looks right. I've been checking the chat and there's no questions so far. Okay, so uh, as Bashak said, like, uh, okay, online teaching, after a while, we got used to it. We knew, we knew what to do. We came up with some cool games and activities that we could share with the kids. And, you know, they were learning and they learned a lot. But the, the, the biggest problem was they couldn't work together. Like one of the, uh, the most important things for me as a teacher is getting the kids to work together um, and learn from each other and give each other ideas and help each other. And I'm sure it's the same for you. And online, this was very difficult to do. Okay, you can send them to breakout rooms, which we did a lot and we found that very useful. Um, but you know, when they're in the breakout rooms, you're not there. You're only in one room at a time. So it's hard to 
get the kids to, to, you know, it's hard to kind of like, when you're in the classroom, you can see them all at the same time. You can see if somebody's playing up or if they're chatting or if they've got their hand up. When they're in the breakout room, you know, they're asking for help and you're helping somebody else and they, they keep sending your request for help and they keep saying later, later, later. And by the time you get there, it's, they've, they've lost their concentration, they're chatting or they're doing something else. Um, so writing was a big thing for us. Uh, like Bashak explained, we couldn't check their writing and we wanted to check their writing and help them along, especially as English learners. They were learning English as a second language. Um, we need to do more writing with them and we need to help them to improve their writing. So how could we do this? In the second semester, we came up with this idea and we kind of like kicked ourselves like, why don't we think of this sooner? And then we could have like helped them a lot more, but you know, and better late than never. So right now we want to share how we use the digital desks with you. And we want to try the digital desks with you and explain how we use them and how you can use them. Um, and we'll give you like some little handy tips as well. And then maybe we can share ideas all together. Um, I hope everybody is familiar with Google Slides because this is the, uh, the tool that we used to create our digital desk. So here is an example of a digital desk. What is a digital desk? It looks like a desk. There's a nice wooden desk. There's a pencil, an eraser, a pencil sharpener, a piece of paper, and some little post-it notes that we attached around as well. So on the green post-it note, you can see we gave the instruction for the, for the kid. Like before this, of course, we don't just, uh, Share them to break out rooms. Say, okay, right. We we talk about whatever we're doing. So if our subject is uh, past simple tense and we've been using adjectives, we've done a lot of work about that beforehand, or we've done the flipped uh, learning side where they've learned about that, and then they're going to actually start to use it uh, in the online lesson, in the synchronous lesson. So we've given them the instructions here on the green post-it note. The pink post-it note here is where their friends can come along to their slide and uh, write some comments. And of course, before we uh, do this as well, we tell the kids to write positive comments. Uh, and most of them are very sweet. They'll, they would just write things like, I love this, this is fantastic, you are so cool. And some of them would even put a little bit moji there and it's very, very sweet. Um, this blue part, the blue post-it note is really, really useful and we'll see how in a second. Um, these are some bitmojis, but you know, if the kid needs help, they can put the SOS, they can actually drag the SOS thing up here. So you know, if they need help. And how do you know, we use something called grid view, which we'll show you in a second. Um, and you can see yeah. what all the kids are doing at the same time, because we're all working on the same document, we, we give them a link for this document, uh, this Google slide, and they all find their own digital desk because uh, you know the kids in our class. So in this little name section here, we would already, we'd have their names already written there. So we'd have Nevra's desk, Bashak's desk, Maria's desk, Mickey's desk or whatever. So we'd say, okay, kids, now go and find your desk and only work on your desk. And okay, everybody start writing. This was one example. This is like an individual piece of work uh, that the kids would do. This, this one here is another example of a digital desk where we would, uh, we wanted to do pair work. So we'd again explain the activity and send the kids off in pairs to breakout rooms. And we want them to practice a structure that we've been uh, learning, which is uh, I like and I don't like using ING. So I like, if you look at the example, we always give them examples because they're young learners. Uh, example, I like doing a reading books, but I don't like eating bananas. Your turn. So the kid writes there and then they can add a picture there. And then if they're struggling, again, they can move their bitmojis up. Teacher, I need your help. And the, the collaborative part where they're working with their friend, once they've written the sentence for themselves, they turn on their microphones in the breakout room and they ask their friend. So, 
you know, Maria, what do you like? Maria says, I like hockey and chocolate ice cream, for example, or sorry, it's, that's the wrong thing. I like eating chocolate ice cream and I don't like playing hockey, for example. So then they're working together like that. Um, you can also put <laughs> worksheets in the on the digital desk. So the student have got the worksheet on their desk and they can use the scribble function in Google Slides to circle the correct number. Again, it's the, the, the thing is, the format is the same. The green post-it note is the instruction post-it note. Uh, the pink post-it note is where their friends can come along and uh, make a comment or write a question. Mm -hmm. And again, if they need help, they're dragging the bitmoji up there. The so, one. If they're fine, they'll just put super. If they're not sure, they can use the middle one. So you can see how they're all working. But how can you see how they're all working? How can you see so how this they're... is not actually? Yeah, uh, this, uh, is, not... this is just what uh, this is an example of the main master slide, mm -hmm. let's say. Uh, when we come along to the actual thing, okay, this is like something that we work, we're going to share with you. Uh, we'll share so the Nevra, link. May I interrupt? May I interrupt for a moment? Uh, so there were some questions, I think, in the chat uh, about the Bitmoji app and we had helpers, I think, answering. So Bitmoji is in each slide. It's like the master slide. You just copy it and we will show you how to do it in a minute. So the students only drag the teacher's Bitmoji. They don't need to add their Bitmoji. This is how they, this is the way they ask help from the teachers. So they don't need a Bitmoji app. And this is a Google product, Google Slides, which is free for everyone. So students just need a simple account that they don't need to pay anything neither the teachers so it's easy we are we are going to show the rest now okay Neva? so um what the it's important to tell the kids to when we shared when we share the link with them that they can only and they must only work on their slide some kids you know they're a little bit naughty and they want to go along and add some silly things onto their friends uh, slide but uh, there's something very useful for us, which is the version history. When you click on file, and I'm very sorry if you guys already know this, but let me just tell you, this is really important. When you click on file and come down to version history and see version history, you can see who has done what at what time. So uh, you can kind of warn the students that you can see if they do something so they won't do anything because we had- Remi uh, Reminding from the beginning is always helpful so that if they do something they need to know they will have some consequences. So the first three slides you can see on this this side are you know this is how we would send it to the kids. The first three slides we might send to them beforehand uh, before the lesson so they can get ready and they can get prepared for the lesson and then the other slides down here are just cop it's the copies of each other. So the most important thing is uh, for us. Should I share the during? The instant feedback part is grid view. You need to use grid view and see what they're all doing at the same time. So if you come along to view. Can I just ask a quick question? Sure. Before we get to the grid view, which I am very excited to hear about. Um, do you share the slide deck in Google Classroom and then that's where students access it to then edit their own desk slide? Uh -huh. Actually, it wasn't the way we shared because we weren't using Google uh, Classroom last year, although we are a Google school, we were using CISO. But during our online lessons, uh, we just shared it through chats or if it was a piece of homework or a, a synchronous work that they had to do before, we were posting link, giving the link through CISO. But you can always add it to Google Classroom as well. We are just getting used to Google Classroom. So I'm not sure about the details there yet because we haven't tried it with Students yet. So, yeah. so there was one document that they all worked in, or did you send them the yes. link to the document yes. and then ask them to make their own copy? Oh, okay. So uh, everyone was writing in the same. In style. the same, yes. We are okay. going to do it now as students do in our lessons. So you are going to try it as a student. Uh, it's a very easy way because 
they, they are young learners. It's, it's going to be very difficult for them to create their own desks. But uh, during the past year, they have also gained a lot of experience with the online uh, learning. So they, some of them were more capable than us. <laughs> so some of them can always do that too. So there's a, this, the, the two main important things uh, as a teacher that you need to know apart from the version history that's really important because I learned about that the hard way and I don't want you to learn the hard way <laughs> so just be aware of that uh, is grid view and also using the master slide because you don't want them to move the paper around you don't want them to say oh Miss Nebra I deleted the bitmoji I deleted this and you don't want to be dealing with those kind of technical things so you can um use the theme builder here there's two in, in view when you use theme builder you can come along and create i'm clicking it but it's a little bit slow when you create something in theme builder it means that uh oh i've come out of feed when you create something in theme builder on the google slide you can create things that they can't move around like look I can move this around, it's the text box, but I can't move the piece of paper around. I can't delete this pencil. I'm clicking, but I can't delete it. I cannot, I can do that, but I don't want to do that. I can't click certain things. Uh, it's Google is a bit slow at the moment because I've got more camera on. And um, when you mark. share screen, sometimes that happens. Yeah. So uh, there's things we don't want them to move around so we just lock them in position but then there are certain things that we do want them to move to be able to ma manipulate obviously like we want them to be able to click and write uh, and the that's one thing we can show you how to do that if you want um, and the other great thing when you're teaching in the classroom is grid view so now we can see all of the slides at the same time we can see, I've, you know, obviously I would have written all of the students' names here. So I can see which student is working at which desk and if they have dragged the Bitmoji into the wrong space or if they're not doing anything. Sometimes, you know, the, the naughty little cherubs will um, turn off their cameras and start playing games when they're supposed to be working. So we can uh, say, oh, uh, Johnny. I can't see you, you're writing anything. Well, uh, oh, you're thinking. Okay, yes, you're thinking. Okay, okay, darling. So you can kind of like move them along. You can see how much work kids have done or haven't done. You can see the comments that they're all writing. So maybe we can share the link in the chat box. Yeah, Bashak, I can. Uh -huh. Yeah. Bashak shares oh, the link. Sure. This in, is the way we share with our students too. So it's in the edit mode. You can all uh, click on the link and get into this uh, slide deck. Uh, it would be lovely if you could just grab a desk and write your name on the desk so no one else stops by that desk <laughs> to write on your piece of paper. And we'll be seeing everything from Nera's screen because she's sharing in the grid view and by the way, uh, our students also have Google accounts in our school. So when we share such things, we share it in the uh, licensed form where only our um, school organization uh, can click on the link. So we have their names when they, uh, when they just click on the link and get into the document. Another quick question that's come up. Um, it, whether uh, littles can do this. Have you had experience with grades one or two managing this well? Our grade two students uh, have apparently used Google Slides. Uh, we talked to our grade two teachers and they have started using Google Slides with them. Uh, our grade one- What's grade one? No. Grade one is a bit uh, different here in Turkey because English is, uh, the, as, uh, English is a foreign language in our country and they learn writing in English later than they do start le learning in Turkish. So uh, we were the English teachers were basically the 
teachers who were using this view. And then, yes, as Nebra said, second grade teachers and students use these slides too. But it's, I mean, students are really quick learners, especially young learners. I have been really surprised at how they learn and how they even taught me to do some basic things in our online lessons. They, they showed me, for example, the whiteboard uh, feature in Zoom, even though I didn't know it. My fourth graders taught me how to do it. So once you just show them, maybe for two lessons, it might be a bit difficult for you to show and to make them understand uh, how they use it. But then for the rest of the year, it's going to be really easy. Also, the uh, slide deck for writing is in view only currently. This one? Really? Just a minute. Ah. Let me check. Uh -oh. I think. Sorry. Yes. No, no problem. Uh, are you changing it? Yes. Hmm, yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry. I just forgot. Editor mode. Yes, now you can go ahead, everybody. The same link, now it's in the edit mode. So, as a student, now you guys are the students, um, and it's nice to be a student sometimes instead of being a teacher. And when, when I'm allowed to be a student, I'm always the naughty student. I always do naughty things because it's fun. <laughs> so, come, go along, pick a slide for yourself, and yes. make sure if you do this in the classroom that you have written the students' names on the slides so they know which slide to go to. Otherwise, you're going to get students complaining. Oh, so it's okay. And I chose that slide, but he came and deleted mine and blah, 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 blah. So make sure you make, uh, write the students' names. So you're on the slides now, but I can see yes. that Lucille has written her name. Well done, Lucille. And Joy's written her name. And I can see that there are some slides have got two people on them. So let's see what P if you want, you can write a little question here for us. You don't have to do the task. You don't have to write a story. <laughs> you can just write us a question or a comment on your slide. You can, if you want urgent help or an urgent do you have an urgent problem or an urgent question you want to ask us go ahead and drag yeah. the bitmoji yeah it would drag be actually nice to move your bitmoji so you know how to drag them and we can see who needs help and we can also see how it looks from the teacher's grid view look six slide the okay fourth slide fifth slide oh, wow super is there <laughs> I can't read these because they're too, okay. I can see that Joy said super. So I know Joy doesn't need any help. So I can, mm -hmm. you know, I can have a quick read of what Joy is doing there. I really like slides. I've used collaborative slides before, but I like the visual and mm -hmm. especially like the, mm -hmm. that. There you go. I can just read what she's writing. I can go along to her slide. If she's having a problem with something, I can specifically click on her slide or uh, say, okay, I like this part you've done here, Joy, but um, you know, maybe you can add something else in this section. Or if, they're, if the little ones are having problems, like they don't know how to do something, you can, go, you can pop along to their slide, because as you know, Google Slides is great for working collaboratively. And this is obviously, this is individual work, but you mm -hmm. might want to have them write something together. Or as I showed you um, at the beginning, there were some other slides where the, the slides where they were writing the things they like doing and don't like doing. So they'd be working in pairs in their breakout rooms. And while they're working in their pairs in their breakout rooms, you know what they're doing. If you've sent, there are 12, lots of if you've sent 12 kids into a breakout room uh, in six pairs, you can see, have they all opened their slides up? Are they all working? Is somebody having a problem? Maybe somebody hasn't connected. Maybe somebody is messing around. You can see all of that. You don't need to be in the breakout room with them at the same time if they're working in breakout rooms because you can see that they're working on your screen. Um, and it's up to you whether you want to share this 
is to share the screen with your students or not. You don't necessarily have to share your screen with them. You can just uh, have it on and have their, you know, their, the Zoom screen uh, in another window. So they're working all together. And also, this is this is only the the way that we thought we that fit for us for our students that met the needs uh, of our students and for it. that was helpful for us. But this is something that we created according to our needs, and any teacher, any subject could be done here. As Nevra showed in the previous slide deck, we just added the maths worksheet just we just found from Google although we don't teach math and we are very bad at it. <laughs> we just edit it because there is a scribble tool in uh, slides as well. If you want your students to write the answers, scribble things on that worksheet, you can use this. It's also very helpful. Nevra is sharing her screen and she's showing the scribble tool there as well. So they can just, let's say, you can ask them to circle the correct answer or you can just ask them to match words and definitions or terms or definitions with lines you can do lots of things so this was the way for us but we would really love to hear from you how you could use it or if this these digital desks have inspired you to use it in your own lessons we would really love to hear from you so we can also improve our digital desks for us too so using the scribble tool is is great for the teacher as well you just if you've given them something to do you might want to go along and put a tick or circle something they need to work on if they're working on something like this you can use the scribble tool or they sorry they can use the scribble tool they'll see this version they can use a scribble tool to come along and circle the correct number of hot dogs which looks like eight so they'll come along and they'll see <laughs> and you can okay, see by it. the way there is a question uh is it possible to add desks uh, while sharing yes you can always add desks you can duplicate slides it's really easy maybe Nevra, you can show how to duplicate a desk you just go to an empty slide uh so, but hmm. yep on you the left side Okay, so on the left side, you see the slides and when you right click one of them, preferably a blank one, so that your students do not have the answer, oh, just the, like the ones with the on answers. PowerPoint. Yes, yes, the same. Oh, so you right. just duplicate okay. it and there's an extra space uh, for a new student or for another student. But when you modify something on one slide, because the others have been uh, duplicated before, the others won't change but you can change the master slide and it will be changed in all of them. If you change it from the master slide, you can do it. And yes, it's sharing. Seeing it from the student's view is really important and trying it makes you understand what, at least anticipate what they can see or what the problems could be. So it's really helpful to see uh, but how they use it. On, as uh, I'm sorry, we're back on view only. <laughs> Oh, uh, Nevra? I haven't done anything. Me, That's me neither. Weird. That's interesting. Uh, then maybe we should check <laughs> the oh, uh, file version. Can... This is back on view only, and I don't know why. Yeah. But, um... Okay, editor mode again. Done. So if there's a notice student among us, <laughs> which is not me, <laughs> we can see it from the <laughs> version history, maybe. <laughs> uh, back. Check. Let's check the version history and see. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and let me just show you version history as well, quickly. Um, version history. So somebody's done something, somebody's complained. Uh, so and so, somebody's deleted something on my slide, uh, or somebody's written something on my slide. So you can come along to version history on file and version history and see version history. And mm. I don't think I can see it in grid view. So let me just skip out of grid view. So uh, by the way, yeah. Angela has a, has a good idea. She, she says she always assigns the same numbers to the students so they know which slide number is theirs. So when you create different uh, 
worksheets or slide decks like this, this, you don't need to write all your students' names one by one. But our fourth grade students got used to it so quickly that they were just writing their names on their desks after they got used to it. And anything else that we missed, Lisa? Not so far. I think we're doing pretty well. Um, so you can, if you want to use the version history, you can, as I showed you, if you click on, click on file, click on uh, version history and see version history, and you can restore it to that version as well, if you like. So if I come along and I see, so what has, uh, what did the first do on the 13th of July, if I click here, then I will see what this person the green, has done. The green dot uh, before Nehra's name, indicates that that's Nehra's doing. So when you see green boxes uh, on the slides, you know that Nehra did them. So Nehra did all the work here. <laughs> or what did we do on the 9th of July? We did something here. Okay, this is the, the green box is something that I was focused on. And then the purple box, as you can see next to Bashak's name, there's a purple dot. So Bashak did the purple thing. So if a student has done something on there, you can see that. I mean, the, uh, the basic, the most important thing about Google Slides is that it's just an online version of PowerPoint. If you can use PowerPoint, you can use Google Slides really easily. It's exactly the same thing, but it has like more things that we um, can use, especially in the online classroom. Um, and I can you guys would want to know how to create a master slide with well, never, uh, yes uh, about the comments part maybe we could write comments on each other's slides or as ken says it's really it's really helpful for students i mean they were in our country most of the time the students were online uh, for one and a half year. Uh, so they, they were really alone at home. But with the Google Slides, this shared documents, they felt like they, they were really working with their friends, especially when they were in the breakout rooms, like the previous one that Nehra shared. They could speak to each other about what they liked, what they didn't like. And then they were writing, both speaking, interacting, and then they were writing nice comments because they, they really realized the importance of having friends. And it was, I mean, it was a year where we learned many things. So they also learn and it's really open. They see, they, they, they write, and then they learn from each other as well because they look at others' uh, work too. When you just do it on the notebooks, when you do something, a piece of writing in a notebook, they just don't see each other's notebooks. So this is how they get to read more. This is how they learn from their peers. This was really helpful for us, but we would really love to uh, have your ideas on that. Would you like to use it? I can see some comments on the slides as well. We can share those maybe if no one is opposed to that. There are really nice ideas. Okay, let's go down and have a look then. Mm -hmm. um, so, problem. I'm planning on to use this as a digital portfolio. Yes, that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea to use it as a digi digital portfolio, but maybe you might want to create something only for that student though. If it's a shared slide thing, um, I don't know. I don't know how you guys do that thing. When we create a digital portfolio, it's an individual thing. Um, then let's have a look. Portfolio, yes. Uh, Joy, it's hard to do chemistry or math on Google Slide. Hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. It's hard for me to do maths or chemistry. <laughs> Not only on Google Slides anywhere. Yeah, in, in our school, we are the ones that all of our colleagues make fun of because we keep thinking that we are really good at maths and we keep doing lots of silly operations and then we say, oh, it's not really that? Ooh. And we still believe that two times three is five. <laughs> That's why I'm not a maths teacher. <laughs> 
I mean, we really got into Bitmoji classrooms this year and we created like a really extensive uh, virtual classrooms with lots of resources for the kids and the Bitmoji app uh, and then the Bitmoji extension, which is up here, uh, is great. We've used that a lot this year and the kids are really used to it. Um, you so might they can at the end of the lesson you might if you don't want the kids to keep on working or you don't trust them to keep on working uh, you can obviously you can take away the editing rights by just you know clicking on share and make sure that it's only view again after the lesson if you only want them to work on it during the lesson and uh, let's have a uh, yeah. look at what people have written <clears throat> like flipgrid yes uh because of uh privacy issues we couldn't use flipgrid in our school because the admins uh weren't so open to that but that's that's well as a solution that we told Nevra and i thought we could use but we never got to use it i think it's a great solution angela to have the kids talk about things and add their links here maybe but flipgrid has the links as well on so they could just post on your links as well i guess so, so also for like feedback for the kids you might just want to give them uh you know you might just want to drag a bitmoji on there for them or you might want to you know okay great work love it well done rosman you did great work here or you might want to uh actually write on the um piece of paper as well for them you know, it's easy, just create a new text box and start writing, write them a comment. And it's the, the kids, like Bashak said before, the friends comment bit, they really love that. They really, really love that because it's a way for them to interact with each other. And it made them really, really happy. And they love, love, love more than anything going to breakout rooms because yeah. they can just be with their friends and, and work, surprisingly. They were actually working in the breakout rooms, which I was pleasantly surprised at. And also there's uh, a comment about whiteboard. Yes, we, we used whiteboard at FI last year too, uh, but we used that especially when we had assessment kind of things where students uh, didn't have to see each other's work. If it's a quiz, piece of a quiz or where I wanted them to work individually, I used whiteboards because the, the students cannot see each other's work in whiteboard as long as you don't share it in uh, your on your screen. So yes, it's very helpful too. But when we want them to work together on slides to write comments, uh, you cannot do it on whiteboard as far as I know because I haven't been using it for the since the last term because we started using this one now. Yeah, and uh, Gina wrote a comment like, I could have really used this about nine months ago. Exactly, Gina. Well, <laughs> we wish we thought of this earlier because then uh, you could have like, but you could create little folders for each lesson. So, you know, you have a story writing lesson for 4B. So you, and then another time you have an adjective lesson. So you put all of the slides there, uh, you have a class folder and then you can see the kids progress as you go along uh, and you can mm -hmm. come back to it and you have actually got the work there in front of you to yeah. see how they progressed um and face-to-face -face lessons oh. as well Bashak. gina asked about face-to-face -face lessons could we still use these yeah. in face-to-face -face lessons i mean oh, in our school no i i know we can yeah so even though i could have really used it you know, months yeah. ago, I still definitely see the value now. And, and it, and it is just brava because it's, it's such a <laughs> simple idea, but you know, yeah. obviously we this is really that. a game changer, <laughs> real, real game changer. And Joy is asking about the whiteboard FI, I guess. Yes. You can see all the students board boards like this. They have individual boards like Google slides, but they cannot visit their slides, their boards on whiteboard. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the good thing about this is it is it's interactive and it is collaborative and it just it it made the kids very happy. It made them want to write because 
you know, even though they, I don't know about you guys, but did you find that um, during this whole, let me stop sharing for a second. Did you guys find that during the whole online teaching caboodle that kids missed writing in their notebooks? They actually, whenever I said, okay, we're going to do something in our notebook, they got really excited. They wanted to feel the pencil and the, the paper and, and they were just silent. They were working silently. And I had like tears of joy. <laughs> oh, my darlings, they're all just working so well. But um, doing it online together, like working online and they're working together, it gave them a, se a sense of we're all together in the Google Slides. We're, we're all together here. We're all working at the same time. And I can go to my friend's desk and write something and see what she's written and maybe get an idea uh, from my friend. Uh, oh, she's used some really cool adjectives. That okay, I forgot about that. Let me go ahead and use those adjectives. You know, they they can see what everyone's doing, and they can inspire get each other. Yeah. <laughs> they inspire each other. Let's say. <laughs> so it was helpful for our students. I guess they they liked it. Whatever whatever we did with them, they were like most of the time. I felt like I was the only one at home with the kids. They depended on their teachers a lot because their parents were working. And when they had their breakout rooms and shared slides, they, they, they felt that they were a community. They knew that they were a class. They were on separate screens. But when they had those shared slides and breakout rooms, it was a game changer for them too. For, for us, this worked well. I hope you can all try somehow, even if you are face to face, because uh, next academic year we'll be we will mostly be face to face, as far as we can see from now. Uh, but we are going to have separators between students, so they cannot interact with each other as they used to do two years ago. So we are assuming they will be using some digital tools when we are face to face too. So we can use this because it's still difficult to get near to a student and help them take their notebooks, pencils, and touch their things because we are not sharing any materials, not touching each other still. So I think this will be helpful for next year too. So we're starting to come up on a 10 minute warning. Okay. So Thank now's you. a great time if everyone has any questions or any comments they'd like to add. This has been an incredible session. All these fun little tricks that we didn't even realize were there in Google Slides. I am so excited about this grid view. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. We're really happy. I mean, we get incredibly excited. Bashak and I just are a bit crazy like that. We'll, we'll find something new and Bashak will send me a text message at like 10 o'clock when I'm watching something on Netflix. Like, oh, Nebra, there's something really cool. You have to try it. I'm like, ugh. I'm in the middle of a film or watching Lucifer on Netflix. And, but then I'm, that's kind of like, it's playing on my mind there. So I'm like, oh, I have to go and see what this is. And there are so many little cool tricks that you find out by, you know, joining Facebook groups or on Twitter or joining um, sessions like, you know, like Flip Tech uh, 2021. There are so many, even if you just learn one tiny little thing, it's, you know, it's really, really helpful and you get really excited. And obviously there's like a lot of excited teachers here that still want to learn even after the, the, the past year and a half we've had, we, we're still here. What's Absolutely. Wrong with <laughs> we are, we're, we're still doing PD online, even though we've been online all year. <laughs> I, know, I think that's going to be the way it is after now. That's Absolutely. easier. I mean, if, if, if this was face-to-face, -face, there, there was no way we could join it. Nera and I could join it as we're in Turkey. Uh, so I'm glad to see many different colleagues from many different parts of the world. It's really nice to see everyone. Uh, our digital desk design might not be the correct design for you, or it might not uh, meet your needs, but there is always a way. Our, we are teachers. We are flexible. We can always find a way. And everything's so customizable. You know, like uh, this may, this is your version, but we can adjust it yeah. to what we'd like to be and yeah. set up that template, set up that grid view. 
Um, yeah. Quick tip for everyone, if you'd like to get your own copy of the chat, because different links have been dropped down there as we've been talking, uh, down where you type in your message, there are three dots and you can click on save chat. That'll save a text file to your computer. We're also recording all of the sessions for Flip Tech 2021 and in the Edmodo pages where you have the various session blocks sectioned out, where you now see a Zoom link, there will eventually be recording links for you. So just to throw that out there as well and there, there's and watch a comment the in the yeah. like for adults this really works for adults too because we presented this in our school uh, with our colleagues uh, and they really interacted with each other the, the yellow and uh, blue one if you remember the where they had to talk to each other to uh for a uh, information gap activities so they were really working in their breakout rooms because we haven't seen each other as well and they were like interacting and it works with adults too with a less childish design oh i mean even students i teach seniors and you know you think of childish design it may not work oh it works like i have students who fight over which sticker they get so it's <laughs> definitely a thing at any age yeah yeah, you never know. All right, so, we're coming up on the end. What do we think? Uh, one little idea that you can take and develop and make it your own. Hope it's been useful for you. Yeah. And slides mania, yes, slides mania. Yeah. All Our right, so. Okay. Here is the writing slide deck. I'm going to drop that into the chat one more time in case you wanted to bookmark that. This is the one that we all were editing together. And then the and main slide deck, I'm going to put we down can, in as well. Uh, Nevra, maybe you can share your screen very quickly and show how to make a copy for themselves so they don't need to work on the uh, shared one. Or you can we can just send it the uh, force copy mode. Uh, well, what would you what would you like? Would you like? Do you want me to? Uh, would you like me to send you a copy version of this, or would just you the like writing to... one? I mean, if they want to design their own, I can add them both to the uh, Edmodo yeah. page if you'd like That's them there. Uh -huh. Done That's and great. done. Cool. Thank you, Lisa. No problem. Very efficient, Lisa. You get the biggest gold star sticker with sprinkles and extra. <laughs> Glad <laughs> I can help. <laughs> okay, then. All right, everyone. So we've got about five minutes before the next session. Uh, no, actually, we're done for the, the time being, aren't we, Ken? Yeah, so keep an eye on the socials, keep an eye on the Flip Learning Network, fliplearning.org for details about the calendar, but we're done until, well, 4 p.m. my time, 4 p.m. Central, which is uh, four hours from now, there will be a keynote type session with Juliana Diaz and Carolina Buitrago from Colombia on Flip Flexible Environment, and that'll be at 4 p.m., and then there's a 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and a 7 p.m., happy hour session to wrap up the day and then we have two more days so please join us thank you all for joining today um, on behalf of the flip learning network I'm, I'm really happy that this is running so well and I'm, I'm excited about how well it's going thank you to all of you all right thank you, Lisa and Ken for all thank you Lisa thank, thank you everyone nice meeting all of you Take have care, a wonderful everyone. break we'll see you in a few hours as the host, I'll always be the last one to leave the room, just like my classes. Okay. I will stop the recording.